You know, we think of Africa as a single place with a single problem, but I mean, the first thing I noticed about the trip from Kampala up to Katini is that there are so many different types of people along the road. And the people in Katini are different from the people who are two hours away. And what is distinctive about them, I think, is that they're a non-hierarchical society, and always were until the British came in and stuck a hierarchy on there and gave them chiefs and all the rest of it. And one of the things about being non-hierarchical, I think you can, you can tell when you talk to the people here, they are uh, extremely softly spoken, very formal in their manner, and quite shy. Particularly the women, particularly the women, it's very difficult to get beneath the, the, the women's shyness to see what might be the real current, the real demands, and the real sense of uh, where the, what they want and, and, and where they want to go. Strangely though, what they lack is a sense of entitlement. They're not making huge demands. The people here are, are, are pretty hungry, some of them, especially the children. But I expected to hear lots of babies crying. I expected to hear that really, that thin, open sound that you know from a, when a baby needs food. But the children I met or saw were quiet, were silent. And in fact, the other variation you see is that some people are doing quite well and some people are not doing well. And it's the children of the people who are doing well who are crying. They're the ones who are making demands. They're the ones who, who, who think they deserve something better. So I went down to Turi to the, the maternity unit and there was a woman laboring there in silence, which to me was the most remarkable thing that she didn't make any noise. And it occurred to me that the pain or difficulty of this protracted nature in people's lives produces silence. So speech, crying, demands, entitlement, these are all signs of great vitality, both mental and economic. It's the people who are doing well who want something and who are asking for something. A lot of AMREF's work is about speech and it's about getting people to talk. And so it's offering people a, an opportunity to break that silence, the silence that, that pain brings. Um, and I find that extremely moving. There have been big changes in Katina in the last year. There's a new road, um, which is uh, a change brought in from the outside. There's the tide of global economics, which is uh, leaving uh, the rip tide of global economics, which may leave these people behind. Um, one of the biggest changes was HIV and AIDS in about 10 years ago, which changed the way that people spoke about sex and relationships and really opened up the whole dialogue uh, within the society. So the language you hear from AMREF and from international aid in general is one of uh, endless acronyms, VHTs, PMCs, and what these are, are 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 committees in which people get together and discuss. And it's hard to see what effect sitting around and discussing anything is going to have, except to me, it's, it's a profound thing for people to be able to talk about their lives, to be able to, to, to ride the, out, the changes that come in from outside, and to start to make small changes in their own local area that, that somehow gives them more control. I was talking yesterday to Margaret Ann Grau, she's one of the village health teams. She goes around talking about sanitation, hand washing. Uh, I mean, hand washing, if we should bring her to Europe and get her into the hospitals and tell people about hand washing. It's an extremely simple message, but nobody seems to get it. And yet, she's plugging away at all of this. The most remarkable thing is, she's not paid for the work she does. She's immensely proud, she's very strongly motivated. Uh, she, she gets a great fill up from doing this work. The place she lives is pristine and, uh, 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 and thriving, you might say. <laughs> the last thing she said when I asked her did she have anything she wanted to add was she said, I want to say thank you for uh, helping people to get a step ahead. And when the line between getting ahead and sinking is so absolute, um, I think it's a, it's a wonderful thing to be able to do that.